Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Devo Day. I think it's four, I don't know um, what day we're on. I think it's four of 10. Um, so welcome back, it's Rev Rod here. Um, I hope you guys are following along with the Devo series during this 10 day leading up to Pentecost um, fast that we're doing, or if you're not doing the fast, that's fine. It's not a problem. Um, I really encourage you to go back and watch the videos. I think God is speaking, especially to my heart and teaching me a lot through this. And I hope you're encouraged as well through this time. Uh, you certainly don't have to, but I'm not putting a plug in for me, believe me. Um, I'll only boast in the cross of Christ. So I'm putting the plug in for Jesus. And so that's why I would encourage you just to go back and, and, and listen to the devotional. Um, because there is a progression, there is a method to my madness with all of this. Um, we've been going over the Holy Spirit. That's what we've been talking about. Who is the Holy Spirit? What's the purpose of the Holy Spirit um, and the Holy Spirit in our lives? And um, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which we talked about yesterday? And today it leads us into water baptism. Water baptism, um, which is not super controversial, um, but uh, I just want to do a quick teaching on it um, to help guide you guys um, and maybe to spark some curiosity, um, answer some questions that you may have, and help you to teach others and make disciples um, of all nations as we're commanded to do by Christ. So with that being said, let's get into it. I'm going to try to stick to my notes here. Um, if you have your Bible, uh, go to Acts 2. Uh, starting at verse 36, Acts 2, starting at verse 36, it says, and this is after, um, uh, this is the day of Pentecost where um, Peter is now going to make, um, well, he just started talking to everybody because everyone's confused the Holy Spirit. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is the third baptism, um, which we'll talk about in a few days here. Um, but this is when the Holy Spirit fell at Pentecost, and um, now Peter is addressing the crowd because they don't really know what's happening. Um, and we'll kind of dig into that later, not today. But So we're going to start at verse 36 in Acts chapter 2, all right? Read along with me. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, now this that was after a long, a long like dissertation of, of talk. That was a long speech from Peter, okay? So that's basically how he's ending. So now they're saying in verse 37, now when they heard this, this whole speech, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? I have a question for you. Have you been cut to the heart? Has God spoken to you, maybe during this devotional series, has God spoken to you at some point in your life where you were cut to the heart? It's going to tell us, God's telling us what we should do when we feel that tug from the Holy Spirit, when we're convinced that God is who he says he is, that Jesus was raised from the dead, um, he's not a charlatan, he, he says who he, who he is, um, and he, he, he does what he says he's going to do, and he fulfills his promises. When we get to that place, our life is forever changed. Have you been convinced of that before in your life? Have you been cut to the heart? Meaning, that callous that we just talked about yesterday, that callousness of our heart, our hardening of hearts, where it cuts straight through it. What cuts through it? The Holy Spirit cuts through it. So have you been cut to the heart? If so, today's the day of your salvation. So I'll continue reading on. Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent. So repent. Believe in Jesus. Believe in who he says he is. Accept his forgiveness. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. He's talking about water baptism. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which... That is the third baptism. We'll talk about that, like I said, um, in a few days. For the promise, that's the Holy Spirit, the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God shall call. 
I was a far off. For sure, I was a far off. I was a good person. Um, before I knew Christ, I treated people right, or for the most part, I tried to um, do unto others. Um, I tried to be respectful, hold open doors, yes, um, yes please, no thank you, you're welcome, all these things, okay? But when I was convinced, when I was convinced God did a radical thing in my life, when I was convinced that God was who he said he is, God changed my heart. He changed my heart. He came in and he, he just took me out of slavery. Some of us don't even know we're slaves to sin. I want to tell you, if, if you're not serving God, you're a slave to sin. If you're not a slave to God, you're a slave to sin. And let me tell you, a slave to God is more glorious than anything you could ever imagine or, or, or dream of. It really is. It's not detrimental to your health. It actually is more free. Because some of you might be thinking, well, if I'm a slave to God, there's a bunch of do's and don'ts and, and this and that and the other thing, and I have to obey. Um, yeah, you're absolutely correct. Okay, But the slave to God, there's actually more freedom in Christ. It's extreme freedom. It's the only freedom than the freedom that we experience when we're away from God. The freedom, quote unquote, I shall I should say. Okay, when you're a slave to the world, you don't you don't think you're um, you think you have ultimate freedom, and actually that's just a, that's just a lie from the devil. Um, how is that freedom going for you, by the way? If you don't know God, how is that working out for you? Um, what has it brought you? I just want to be honest with you, like. That it's always going to be the next thing for you. The world is always going to turn up empty in your heart. And there's always going to be a void in your heart. Turn to Christ today. If your heart was hardened and this right now is cutting to your heart, turn to Christ. I just encourage you. So I'm going to move on now. Um, and it goes on. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. That's such a good word. So um, today, right now, baptism, water baptism is all over the place in the New Testament. Um, we're going to look at a, a peak of the Old Testament and how it was a shadow of, of something to come. Um, but I just want to briefly go over like what and who and when you get baptized and just kind of in that format. So what is baptism? Baptism, I want you to listen, baptism is a um, public demonstration or a public proclamation of, in, of our initial identification with Christ Jesus and the church. Okay? So water baptism, after you're saved, you get water baptized. After you're saved, that's our first baptism. We're baptized into the body of Christ. And then the Bible tells us to, what shall I do? What, what should I do when I'm cut to the heart? What should I do when I, I rely on Jesus? I call on him as my Lord and Savior. I believe on him and I receive that forgiveness. What should I do? The Bible tells us to get water baptized. So it is water baptism. I'll say it again. It is our public proclamation or demonstration of our initial identification with Christ Jesus and the church and the body of believers okay not the church like your local church you know with the steeple and like the you know whatever um, no 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 the church is the believers it's the church it's not a building Okay, it's the church. It's the body of believers that are united by one spirit, one faith, one Lord. Okay, um, so that's what it is. And every word in there is important. I would write that down um, if you haven't. Why? Um, why get that into your heart? Because when we first come to know Christ, we are now identifying, um, putting our ID, our identification 
our name, who we are, we are putting our trust, everything about us, we're putting that to Christ. Okay? So right when we come to know uh, Christ, we are putting our faith, hope, and trust in Him, and then we publicly put that out there. Not in a boasting way, but we publicly say, you know what, this is my public proclamation because I want everybody to know that I am following God. I want everyone to know. So you want to ask, what is it? That's what it is. Water baptism is our public proclamation of our initial identification with Christ Jesus and His church. Some of you are asking, why should I be baptized? Yesterday we talked about, I asked you a question right at the very end. Is Jesus our example? Is Jesus our example? Once you come to know Christ, is Jesus our example? Yes. Absolutely. Jesus Christ is our example. He is our perfect example. He is the spotless lamb. He is, he became sin who knew no sin. He is our example. So let me ask you a question. Okay, just going to ask you. Um, number one, have you been water baptized? And number two, if Christ is our example, and Christ was water baptized, do you think we should be? That's just a, that's just a question. You could answer that out loud right now. You could, whatever you want to do. Um, but that's just a question. If Christ is our example, in Christ, Jesus Christ, God in flesh was water baptized as an example for us. Should we be water baptized? Absolutely. Absolutely we should be. So, number one, why should we be baptized? Because Christ did it. And you can look this up later, but I want you to write it down. Um, Christ's baptisms are found in, um, well, spirit baptism. Uh, remember the dove came down. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but his water baptisms are found in uh, Matthew 3, Luke 3, John 1, and Mark 1. Okay? They're found in all four Gospels, which is amazing. All right? Uh, because there's not a lot of things that are in all four Gospels, but um, the baptism is one of them. All right? So you can go there. It's Matt and Luke 3, and then John and Mark 1. All right? You can go look that up later, but it was our... That was our mandate. He did it. Number two, um, it is obeying the command of Christ. In Matthew 28, he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the Son and in, of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's water baptism. Let me ask you a question. How are we supposed to go make disciples if we ourselves have not been water baptized? I'm not putting you down. I'm not shaming anybody. God doesn't do that. I'm just saying, God has laid out a biblical um, practice for us, a guideline, and he wants us to follow that. Does baptism, water baptism, save us? Not at all. Not at all. Can you speak to somebody about Christ without being water baptized? Absolutely you can. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is Jesus gave us this biblical mandate to be water baptized. Why? Because if you go back to what is water baptism, it's our uh, public proclamation of our initial identification of Christ and the church. So Christ is wanting us to proclaim it. Like, look, this is who I've decided to follow. I have decided. Remember that song? To follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning. Never mind. All right. So I won't quit my day job. Don't worry. Um, so anyway, yeah, you decide to follow Jesus. You're going to tell everybody about it. There's no turning back for you. So you're going to make it known. You're not going to walk the fence anymore. You're not going to be right on the fence. Okay. There is no fence any, anyways. Okay, you want to know why? Because the devil owns the fence. All right? He owns the fence. You're either 100% with God or you're 100% with the devil. Take your pick. All right? So I'm not putting anybody down. But God desires for us to be obedient to his word and go make disciples, baptizing them. So if you haven't been water baptized, I would encourage you 
to be to get water baptized. Um, in Ephesians, it talks about how it unites us as one body. Um, I already talked about that a little bit. One body, one faith, um, one God, one Lord, one baptism. Okay, um, it, it unites us as a body of believers. Okay. Um, and obviously it was the prescribed practice. So what is the meaning of baptism? That's my point number uh, two. What is the meaning, or point number three, what is the meaning of baptism? Baptism is the celebration of grace, of the grace of Christ. Okay. Obviously it's not necessary for salvation. All right. It's not totally necessary. It's not necessary for salvation to get water baptized. Think about the thief on the cross. Um, Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Um, do you remember that? There's three people, and there's Jesus, and then two other people hanging out with him, literally hanging out with Jesus, and um, the other one didn't want anything to do with him, and the other one, he, you know, gave his life to Christ. He saw him, They're like, yep, that's the Christ, that's the Messiah right there. Jesus says to him, today you'll be with me in paradise. Okay, so he was saved. He was, that guy was saved. The thief on the cross was saved. Now, I'm sure he would have liked to say to the soldiers at that point, hey, um, let me go get water baptized really quick. I promise I'll be right back. No, <laughs> right? Do you know what I'm saying? No, like I'm sure he would have wanted to go, but it wasn't necessary. So water baptism doesn't save us. It's just a representation of Christ, okay? In Romans 6, it talks about how we were um, buried in baptism with Christ. We were, we were buried with him in baptism. And because of that, we are certainly raised to life in baptism. So it's the whole um, concept or symbolism of you actually going down into water as an old person, your old self, okay, and then coming up that new man, that new person, that new woman. Okay, sorry. Um, that's what it's that's what it's representing. Um, so it's just a. If you have a chance, go read Romans six. Okay, one through Romans six one through fourteen. All right, go read it. Um, you are dead to your sin. You are dead. You are buried. That sin is being buried. Okay, and when you come up, you are a new person. This is just but a symbol. And I want to read you this. Um, this is my next one. Baptism is a celebration of Christ. Have you ever thought of it that way? It's a celebration of who Christ is. When someone is baptized, they are not being made right before God. They are celebrating the reality that they are right before God through faith in Jesus. You're celebrating. When, when you are water baptized, you are proclaiming, like I said, Christ in your life. You are celebrating Christ. You're celebrating the reality that you're made right in the sight of God through Jesus Christ. That's what you're, it's a celebration. Water baptism is a celebration. Um, it's an illustration. It's not just a celebration, it's an illustration of Jesus Christ. If I had a picture of um, Alexis and my kids, um, Alexis is my wife, um, Alex and Alexis, I know, it's super cute. Um, but yeah, so Alexis and my, and my kids, if I had a picture of them, it wouldn't represent them as, like, flesh, right? Do you understand that? Like, it's a representation of them, okay? They're upstairs right now doing God only knows what, okay? Um, so anyway, um, but if they were here, it would be, like, that actual person, so when we get water baptized, it's an illustration of what's happening, okay? Um, it's, it, it's, um, it's just that, that representation, it's just a picture of, of what's happening inside of our lives. Basically what I'm trying to say is um, it's, a, it's, it's portraying outwardly of what's happening um, inwardly to us. All right, does that make sense? I hope it does, okay? Um, we show identification with the death of Christ. I told you that, if, and that's found in Romans 6. You can go check that out, um, the going into the water, coming out. I want you to think about, though, 
um, in Exodus uh, 14, you can check it out, when the Israelites are leaving Egypt, okay, God delivers them out of their slavery, our, their bondage, like, we're delivered, okay, then they come to a, a screeching halt because there's a sea there, okay, so God makes it dark, okay, you could go read, and, um, says Moses stretch out your hand okay boom sea is split it they start walking through on dry ground now you have water on both sides left and right as a wall the Bible says it was a wall they had to trust they had to do it they had to step out into faith <coughs> excuse me saying you know what I'm I'm all in with this See, water baptism, you're saying, you know what, God, I'm all in. I'm not going back to Egypt. How many of us, we start off as believers, we start off, yeah, this is so awesome, God's so awesome, and then we get to, like, this sea where, or it could be some sort of trouble in life or um, the cares of this world, as the parable of the sower explains, and we're like, nah, this God thing's not for me, and we go back to our sin. We go back to slavery. We go back to bondage. Uh-uh. God wants, it's not salvation, but God wants us all in. So he's saying, you know what? Trust me. Make a declaration. Trust me today. So the Israelites had to walk through, and they walked on dry ground. Okay, walked on dry land with those, uh, with the water as walls on each side. And then, as you know the story, they go through, and that water comes crashing in on the Egyptians, okay? You know what that represents? That represents sin. All that garbage and luggage and baggage that you carry around, that we carry around before Christ, even sometimes during we know Christ, and we carry it around, and it's just weighing on our shoulders. You know what Christ did? He put water on top of that stuff, and he sent us out of the water. That's what he did for us. He sent all our anxiety, our worries, everything, like everything, anything you can imagine. He sent that to the pit, utter darkness, and he brought us out into his glorious light. Do you see the imagery? Do you see the picture of what Christ wants to do? Here's the problem. We want to just look back and we want to dip our toe sometimes right back into that, that water of the Red Sea, where all our sin was, where all your stuff was, where all your bondage was, where all your addictions were. We just want to tip just, just a little bit back into the water, okay? Well, it's like, you know, it's like at dark when you're like, you know, do I jump in or not? Someone's going to come up and grab your ankle. That's like the imagery I have. When you start dipping your toe, even if it's a toe, even if it's your pinky toe, okay? Um, with a long nail on it, all right? Even if it's that and you're dipping it in, your sin, let me tell you, your sin, the devil, the enemy, is going to pounce on that like pronto, right away. He's not even going to give you a moment. He's just going to take you, and before you know it, like quicksand, you're just going to sink and sink and sink until you're right back, washed up to shore on the other side of the Red Sea, which is Egypt. Don't tiptoe. Don't, don't dip a toe right back into that water. God has set you free. So there's so much more that I need to go over, and I'm going to try to move through this quickly because I know I've been going for a while now. Um, but I hope you guys are okay. Um, how should I get baptized? Um, there's a lot of differences out there. How should you get back baptized? Um, and it's okay that there's a lot of differences, but we want to be mindful of what the Bible says. Okay, so the, the precedent, the biblical precedent, um, the biblical pattern or picture um, is immersion, which means full immersion under, okay? Um, I'm not saying that um, our brothers and sisters of different denominations who have different beliefs, um, like sprinkle or like just like a, <laughs> like a splash, like, you know, um, anything like that um, is necessarily wrong. Okay? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the biblical mandate um, is immersion, fully under and up. OK? 
Okay, you can see you can see from Exodus, you can see from um, the New Testament, you can see that this was uh, the standard or the biblical precedent that was laid out for believers. Okay, now it's not salvation. Okay, all right. A lot of people are going to fight about this and, and this, that, or the other thing. Um, I want to I want to make sure that I'm clear with my words here. Lord, help me. Um, it's a heart thing. You identify with Christ as your Savior, you're safe. You, let's say you can't get into a pool, okay? We're going to sprinkle, we're going to sprinkle over your head. Why? Because God knows your heart. He knows the inward change, and you're making a public proclamation that you're a slave to him, okay? So let's stop fighting about all that stuff, and let's just focus on Christ. I will say this, though, however. People will have, have told me, and I could even, I'll just tell you my, my story, okay? When I was raised, I grew up um, in a denomination where I was baptized when I was younger with water, when I was a baby, okay? Um, then I grew up, I didn't know Christ. I, I knew him, but I don't think I was following him. I wasn't a Christ follower. Then I decided to follow him. Then I decided to get water baptized. Did I get water baptized again? No, I don't think I did. I was old enough to make my own decision to follow God. That's it. I was old enough to make my own decision to follow Him. And as a baby, thank God I had parents who wanted to bring me up in a church and raise me with godly morals and standards and principles. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Okay, but when I got old enough to make my own decision for myself, I said, you know what? I've decided to follow you, and the biblical mandate for me is to now take my faith on as my own. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for, for raising me that way. I'm going to do it what I feel is right now according to Scripture. So I got water baptized. Um, and that's just a little bit of my story there. Um, so... Um, who should be baptized? Everybody who's born again should be baptized. Like, pronto. Like, get baptized, man. All right? Um, if you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Christ, and and you're not baptized, it's like, a, that's, it's like an oxymoron. Like an unbaptized church member, not like your local church, but like the body of Christ, the body, the, the church body, okay? An unbaptized church, church member is is like an oxymoron okay it's like jumbo shrimp all right or microsoft works okay i'm just kidding there's a dig sorry about that okay that was, never mind all right so anyway um where was I? I lost my whole train of thought okay so if you're born again you get baptized get baptized and when should i be baptized when i'll tell you what as soon as asap as possible you need to get baptized as soon as ASAP as possible. Trust in Christ for your salvation. As people come to know Christ, they are baptized. This is not something a Christian grows into. As soon as you know Christ as your Lord and Savior, okay, we've gone over this. As soon as that happens, you need to get water baptized, okay? As soon as you can, okay? As soon as you can publicly make that proclamation to get baptized, um, you need to do it. You need to do it. I encourage you to do it. Okay. Um, one question on here, um, and then I think I'll be all done, but is there such thing as a rebaptism in water? Some of you might have questions on that. Is there a rebaptism? Um, no. <laughs> no. I can't find anywhere in the Bible. You could you could email me and we could talk it over, but I can't find anywhere in the New Testament where there's a, a rebaptism. Okay? A rebaptism. Like the Israelites going back through the sea into Egypt and then back through the sea as their second water baptism or that that shadow or that symbolism um, never happened. So I can't tell you biblically I can find that. Now, um, if you got rebaptized in water um, either the first time <laughs> you just went for a swim you just got dunked basically you just had your pastor dunk you which is funny actually um, 
uh, you didn't get baptized then, I guess. That is a heart thing between you and God. That's in your heart, okay? My encouragement to you, let's say that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has spoken to you, you were saved, you got water baptized, and now you have kind of, nah, you dip back into your sin. You dip back into that Red Sea. You dip back into it. I would encourage you to get into your word. I would encourage you to pray, to start fasting. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't really encourage you to get water baptized. I would encourage you to get spirit baptized, which we're going to talk about. Um, it's If you believe, if you know that you know that what you did was true, stick with that. Okay? If you don't feel like, if you half-heartedly just like was like, yeah, everyone seems to be getting wet today, I think I'll just get baptized, and you don't really think it, it had anything to do, then you need to talk to your pastor, and you need to make a commitment to God and get water baptized. Okay, does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay, I only got one shot at this, so I'm just letting it roll. All right? Um, I hope you guys are blessed by this. I know I was a little long, but this is a big teaching, and I hope you guys took a lot out of it. Um, may God bless you um, today. Let me pray for you before we go. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. Go with everyone who's watching. Father, I ask, Lord, if they've made a commitment but not have been water baptized, I ask, Lord, that you um, would encourage them um, as soon as they can publicly to get water baptized, Lord. Father, I ask that you would bless them, everybody who's watching right where they're at right now, Lord. Um, Go with them now in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. All right, guys. Uh, may God bless you today. Um, happy Memorial Day. As always, thank you so so much to our vets um, for our freedom that we enjoy here because of the sacrifice and service and commitment and dedication um, that you have made for us um, and to our country for that matter. All right. God bless. See you tomorrow.